This video is sponsored by Stream. Stream helps you to build scalable chat and activity feeds for your application. Stream also takes care of security hosting and scaling so you can focus more on the functionality and building high quality applications. Check out their SDKs for many different platforms. They have iOS with Swift and iOS with Swift UI, Flutter, Android, React, React Native, and so much more. To learn more about Stream, check the link in the description for more information. Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can get started with Mac OS navigation using Swift UI. So let's go ahead and take a look at our very basic application. You can see that right now I have a content view and in the content view, I don't really have much going on. So let's go ahead and create a sidebar as well as a detail view. And the reason that we are doing that is to show you that how the navigation actually works, what are the limitations of the navigation and how we can create our lightweight routing engine, which works with Mac OS. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a sidebar view. There we go. Now in the sidebar view, what we're gonna do is simply display some numbers. It's kind of like a list of something. It doesn't really matter. All the views in our example will be just some dummy fake views. So let's go ahead and add some sort of a list of something. Okay, so we have these list of items. We can even say item number, whatever. Let's go ahead and display the sidebar view. So I'm gonna go over here, and if I want to do a two screen or a split screen navigation, I can simply go ahead and use a sidebar. That will take the first half of the screen. You can see that already by default, if I just put a navigation view and inside the navigation view, I put a sidebar or any other view that becomes automatically on the left-hand side. Now, if I put another view over here, like a text view, this will go on the right hand side. All right, so sidebar is left and the detail is on the right. And that is perfectly fine. If I want to now perform some sort of a navigation that I select an item and I should display the details, I can also do that. But let's go ahead and create another view over here and we can call it details view. So I'm just gonna call it details view. And obviously this view again will be very, very simple. There's nothing much will be going on in this view. We will simply just go ahead and display some details. I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap this into vStack. You will see later why we're wrapping it at vStack. I will also make sure that in order to show the details, you need to pass in the integer, the index. That's the stuff that we are showing. So we can pass the index. And over here in the preview, we can make it happy by providing some sort of an index. Now let's go ahead and use its details view. So I can go back to my content view and simply replace this with a details view. Now, I need to pass something over here in the details view, basically the index, but the index initially will be zero anyway, so we can just pass in zero. This means that if you don't pass anything by default, we will simply pass zero. So the first item in the list should be selected. Okay, so you can see it's simply saying zero. All right. Now we can go over here and adjust this to a different font if you want that, that's fine also. System size, I can go ahead and probably go with, let's say 60, it's gonna be pretty big. There we go, all right. Now what I want to do is in a sidebar, which is this one, I should be able to click on this text and I want to show the details of that in the right hand side in the detail view. So in iOS, and you can also use it over here, you can use a navigation link. 
we can provide a destination where you really want to go. So in this case, I want to go to the details view and I will pass in the index, the selected index, and the label that is being displayed as a link will be the text view that we just created. All right, let's go back to our content view and try to run this. Okay, so this is how it looks like right now. Now you can see that it's working correctly. If I click on any of these things, you can see that it is updating. So our sidebar and selections on the sidebar is reflecting what is going on over here on the right hand side. So this all is working correctly. Now let's say that we have another requirement that in the details view, you can actually go to contact us page or a contact us screen. So this means that maybe there's a button over here and that is saying go to contact us. Now what should we do? When we click on this button, we would like to go to a different view. If I go ahead and run this, obviously it's not really going to do anything because we don't really have any code in the contact us button. In order to do that, we need to create our route. So we will create our simple routing engine that can be used for macOS. Now you might be wondering that, hold on, why can't I just use a navigation link? Unfortunately, if you're using this approach, the navigation link is not really going to work. What you will have to do is when you click on the button, go to contact view, you will replace this entire right hand side somehow with a brand new view, the contact us view. So that is something that we'll have to build. First, I'm gonna to go to the sidebar and I'm gonna remove the navigation link because in the end, you will see that we won't be able to use the navigation link for our benefit. So let's go ahead and remove that. Now, obviously, if we remove that, then we will not really get any navigation and it's just going to display uh, text and that's it, a list of items. And I can't be able to select any of those. We will try to fix some of those problems. But right now what's going on is that if I run the application and I click on any of these things, it's not working. And also if I click on the go to contact us button, that is also not working. So let's go ahead and work on our small routing engine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a new file. I will call it app state. You can call it route state also, but since we're only learning about the routing, I'm just gonna call it simply as app state. Before we go and jump into the app state, I'm going to define some routes. This means that where I actually want to go. So I want to go to the detail where you have to pass in the selected index. I also want to go to contact us and I also want to go to services, which we haven't really figured out how. All right, so we have created our routes. Now let's go ahead and create our global state, which is app state, observable object. Now, if you don't want to put this in a global state, that's fine. You can even create slices of the global state. And if you look at the videos a couple of uh, weeks before, you can find multiple environment objects and that is how you can accomplish that. So I'm gonna create a property called routes, which will be an array of routes. And by default, we're just gonna put the first route in there, which will be detail route, because that's the route that is displayed when you load the screen, and the first one is actually selected. We will create functions like push, where you can push in a route. So this may remind you of the navigation controller in UI kit. So we are kind of like using the same exact approach, and we can perform a pend of a particular route. And we can also perform a pop 
this is going to return you a route. If you want to use it, then that's perfectly fine. If you don't want to use it, then it is not really going to complain because I'm just going to put it discardable result, meaning if you don't have anything on the left hand side of equal to sign when you are calling the pop function, it's not really going to complain. And we will also have a something called current route. Route, which will just return you the last route, and that's it. And that's it. This will be our main routing engine. Let's go ahead and try to see where and how we can use it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to our sidebar. In the sidebar view, you can see that I have a text, but I can go ahead and put an on tab gesture and say app state dot push and we want to go to the detail passing in the index. Now, where does this app state coming from? Well, that is the environment object. We still have to inject the environment object, which we haven't done that. So let's go ahead and do that also. Let's go to the Mac OS navigation app and simply inject the environment object. And we're going to inject the environment object by saying environment object and simply passing the app state. There we go. Okay, let's go back to the sidebar. Now, one thing that now you are noting is when we tap on this text, which is item one, item two, and whatever, we push a new navigation. Now, whenever we push a new navigation, which is basically we're saying that, hey, we want to show the details screen we still need somehow to change this to a detail screen. Now, this is already detail screen. So this is kind of great. This is already detail screen, but we still need to pass in that which detail are we talking about? I mean, which detail mean which index was actually selected? So in the content view over here, we can also go ahead and create an environment object. and the final part, which is the detail view, so if we are looking at it like this, right? This is a sidebar, so this is fine, but this is a detail view. But it's not always going to be detail view. I mean, sometime it will be detail view on the right hand side, but sometime it will be contact us view, sometime it will be services, some other screen. So this is the part that is being replaced. So we need to check that if the app state is telling you that the route is a particular route. So let me go ahead and unwrap this first. So app state dot current route. And now we can perform a switch on the current route. And we can say if it's detail, then we can simply go to detail view and pass in the int. So that should be done. I think we should call it index i guess there we go okay when it is contact us then we can go ahead and say contact us view which we don't have right so i'm just going to return over here uh, let's say contact us if it is services then we can simply say it's going to be services there we go so let's go ahead and run this Okay, so now we have a, okay, so we need to delete that part right there. That's why it's showing us three different columns. And let's go ahead and run it again. Okay, now if I select this, you can see that it is working fine. Obviously, since we're not using the navigation link, the highlight is gone and you can work on the highlight on your own, but you can see that the navigation is working fine. We can select a particular item and it refreshes the detail on the right hand side. But what about if I click on go to contact us, nothing really happens. But we can do that. Let's go to the detail view. And when you click on go to contact us, we can again use our app state and the routing engine that we just created to tell 
our app state to push a new route, which will be contact us. Now let's go ahead and run it. And there we go. We are able to go contact us. Pretty cool, right? Now let's go ahead and create an actual contact us screen because right now we don't really have a nice contact us screen. So let's I'm gonna go over here and create a new view. And I'm just gonna call it contact us view. In the contact us view, we are we will have a couple of different things. Obviously, we should probably say contact us. I'm just gonna go ahead and say uh, let's wrap this with at stack. All right, and this will say contact us. And from the contact us, we also want to go back, right? So we should be able to do that also. So I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of different things. I'm going to add a button to go back, but I'm also going to add a button to go to a different screen called services. There we go. So when we press the back button, it will simply say pop. This means pop, pop it out. And if I say go to services, then we will push a new route, which is services. Let's go ahead and try to first make sure that we are using our contact us, which is right here. Instead of the text, I'm just gonna say contact us. And let's run this. Okay. So if I select something from the left hand side, you can see it's working correctly. If I click on the contact us, it goes over here. If I click back, it goes to the to the previous screen. So you can see that our history is also working perfectly fine. Now let's go ahead and implement the another one, which is services screen. So I'm just gonna go ahead and probably create a new view for services screen or a services view services view just for fun all right and i'm going to go ahead and replace this with this let's go ahead and add a bit of a font over here let's say system size 42 or something and now we can go back to our content view and when we click on the services we will take the user to the services view all right and let's go to the contact us view. Okay, that should be okay, I guess. Okay, so we can select the item from the left menu and you can see it's refreshing. I can go to the contact us view. This is a contact us screen. I can go to the services screen. I can go back. Who Who's the back? I mean, if I go back, what should I see? Contact us, right? There we go, it's contact us. What should I do if I select the back button? I should go to the details view. There we go. If I select 10 and now go to the contact us services, then back and back, you can see it's working correctly. So we have implemented a routing engine, a small routing engine for our Mac OS application where it preserves the history of where we are going. So you can see, you can de definitely navigate to different pages, different screens, and you can go back and forth through them. So this is a great way of handling navigation in your macOS application for Surf UI.